All right, ladies and gentlemen, Video 44 here, coming at you with another video. We are talking about Game 7. Game 7 of the Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee Buck in Bucks in Boston, 12.30 uh, Pacific, 3.30 Eastern. And what we are looking at right now uh, is two teams that have beaten each other up, strategized one another to death, know one another like the back of one another's hands, and um, both wear green, <laughs> for whatever that's worth. No, but seriously, this is a situation where you're coming off of Jason Tatum uh, having a game of his life, playoff game of his life, um, after having a very poor game five. One thing that I noticed about game five is that every shot that he was uh, bricking pretty much was from straight away, uh, top of the key, pretty much the same spot. Game six, he attacked from pretty much anywhere and everywhere on the floor and uh, got in the paint much more converted much more shots in the paint so that's going to be a recipe for success for Jason Tatum continuing to uh, not be so predictable with his shot selection continuing to attack from other angles he has the ability to hit any shot on the floor choose them all over the place the more variety I think uh, the harder he is to defend um, so that's how I'm looking at that they can't fall in love with the three but that may not necessarily be within their control because it seems as uh, that's been a thing the entire series. The Bucks have controlled the glass, or rather controlled the paint to be more specific. They have kept Brooke Lopez and Giannis uh, down there for rim protection and because up until game six, the Celtics weren't necessarily lighting it up from behind the arc, um, they were able to get away with it, you know? So in this particular matchup, game six, the Celtics found their way from behind Trey and as a result, uh, that plan didn't work. They were to hit 17 three-point shots, and ultimately, um, that was the deal breaker. The thing that was very interesting to me in regards to Game Six was when you look at the field goal attempts for both teams. I think the Bucks only had one more than the Celtics, just one more. And you look at the offensive rebounds. I think the Bucks had one more. I think it's one of those situations. They're both the same there. You look at the fouls, and the foul differential was a little substantial, but not, not insane. But what you see is double the three-point attempts for the Boston Celtics. So if, it's not, if, if those extra possessions are not represented in offensive rebounds, second-chance points, then that tells me that the Boston Celtics basically held the ball, had twice as many possessions, some miraculous way. It's not reflected in the fouls. It's not reflected in the rebounding. So what that tells me is that the Bucs are going to need to do a better job of controlling the clock. <laughs> that's, that's what this tells me. The Bucs are going to have to stop taking such quick actions that get the ball back in Boston Celtics' hands. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm gathering. Now, maybe I'm not looking at that correctly. I'm not a basketball mind. I didn't play the game. But if, if, if they're getting double the three-point shots as you and you guys have attempted everything else the same and it doesn't show in the rebounding total, then something weird is happening. <laughs> like, something is happening to where the Boston Celtics are ending up with the, uh, the ability to shoot nearly 20 more shots than you from behind the arc. You know, that's, 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 so that's something that I'm just looking at. Maybe, maybe it's nothing. But I do think that the, the, the Milwaukee Bucks do need to control the ball, control the clock throughout the entire game. <clears throat> as long as Boston has the ability to get up more shot attempts, uh, their ability to defend you and their more well-rounded team in terms of their offensive weapons makes it so that even though both teams are great defensively, I do think in theory the Celtics should have more success guarding the Bucks than the Bucks should have success guarding the Celtics. Just simply in theory, right? So because that's just in place, the Bucks are going to have to find ways of keeping the Celtics from scoring the ball so much, you know, other than defense, other than like literally just standing in front of them and playing defense. And that, that comes from controlling the ball, controlling the clock, taking your time with your possessions, running them down to say five seconds before you even shoot extra passes and things of that nature. Giannis get such easy and quick buckets, right? And he's driving at the rim, boom, already there. And they go back down there and launch a three. 
he just scored two, they launched three, score two, launch three, score two, launch three. But he's scoring so fast that he's getting them right back to the three. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's what happened to them. That's what the numbers tell me. That he's the Bucks are moving so fast, scoring so quick, boom, boom, boom. And you're giving the Celtics another chance to shoot three. Bam. You score two, they score three. You score two, they score three. You torch them, they score three. But you're doing it so fast. So if you score too slow and then hurry and get back on D, right? Maybe that can lessen the blow if those three-point shots are falling. Because what I see there is 17 out of 43 from three-point arc. And as to where the Bucks were somewhere in the 20 shot range. Double your three-point shots. And it ain't coming from offensive rebounds. It ain't showing up in the fouls. You guys got to control the clock. So that's, that's something I know. If the Bucks find a way to control the clock, and they slow down their possessions, be more methodical about how they attack, can't just be Giannis over and over again. That's, that's the formula. That's what it really comes down to. When you put the ball in Giannis' hands, he's a one-man band that scores too fast. I know that's crazy, but it's true. As to where Luka Doncic, he's a one-man band that you can it slows down the ball. So they ain't hurrying up to get back to three. And he's shooting the three. Do you see what I'm saying? A lot of his shots is a one-man band is the three. Trey Young, same thing. A lot of his shots, even though he goes early in the shot clock sometimes, to the disadvantage and he doesn't win because of it. But nevertheless, if you're considering, he doesn't score as easy and as fast as Giannis. It's not an automatic two points, he's at the rim. Two points, he's at the rim. Because what does that do? Even though it gave you two points, it gets the ball back in my hands. Now I get to go back down there and shoot three. See? As I talk in circles, it makes even more and more sense to me. They just have to control the ball, control the clock. So, that's one thing. Um, and it may not necessarily be necessary if the Boston Celtics aren't hot from behind the arc. Because if the Boston Celtics shoot 43 threes tonight and only hit eight of them, they're losing. <laughs> Home or not, you're losing. So they need to be very careful about being efficient with that three-point shot. And uh, that starts with Jason Tatum, in my opinion. And it ends with Jason Tatum. Because he's the guy that's going to be taking the most shots. Um, Marcus Smart has been really, really good lately in terms of uh, scoring the ball. He started the series hurt. He's healthy now. He's a problem, especially at home. He's still very much a problem. If you think for one second that he isn't still thinking about what happened there with Drew Holiday in game five, you're wrong. Just because they won game six does not mean that he's shaking that off. He's still very much thinking about that. And I know for a fact he's going to be looking to get his pound of flesh out of Drew tonight. I'm sure Drew was thinking the same. The most important thing for Drew Holiday to me, and this is this is the thing that I see he's trying to adjust to and he can't seem to find a, a good medium for what the team needs. He's trying to shoot more, right? But he's playing a lot of defense. So throughout the meat of the series, say game two, three, four, five, he was very inefficient because he's had so much to do on the offensive end, on the defensive end, to where, you know, when he's launching up 23 and 24 shots trying to make up for Middleton not being there, it's just not translating to him being very efficient. Those are lost possessions. He's breaking. So in the last game, you're upset at him offensively for only making five field goals. I think he only attempted 15. 15 is a more of a good balance for him, right, for what it is that you want him to do. But... Here's the problem. That particular game, they needed him to shoot about 25, 26 shots because nobody else was attempting shots. So it's, it's about finding that sweet medium for him while balancing out all his responsibilities defensively. And that's a lot to bear. You know what I mean? It's a lot to bear. You're going to need to find something else from someone else in Milwaukee if they're going to have any chance uh, at taking this game at, on the road. Um, so that's, you know, a Grayson Allen. Pat Connaughton, I read a, a very, very good article this morning where a guy was just basically saying that the, the Celtics are hunting mismatches. And he, he illustrated all the various mismatches that they're hunting, and two of them uh, were those two bench players, Pat Connaughton and uh, Grayson Allen, are both being targeted defensively by the Celtics. So they're going to have to be careful about that. Uh, look for the drive is what this gentleman said. I wish I remembered his name. I'm so sorry I'm not prepared like that. But uh, it was a great article, and I encourage everybody to check out um, – SI Bucks. They got a good article about that. And uh, what it does is, is, is essentially uh, render them uh, to be players that if they're not scoring, they're a problem. You know what I mean? And Pat Connaughton helps you so much on the board, so that's not necessarily the case. But Grayson Allen's going to have to do a better job of, uh, of, of just being 
being efficient like he was in the Chicago series. If they can have a game like that out of him tonight, uh, it will it will help them all the more. You know, it may be a make or break situation that he scores upwards of twenty points tonight. You know, depending on how the others are looking, they really do need Grayson to find his confidence from from Chicago. You know, like that's the Grayson that the Bucks were able to win games with. When he's not himself, it's a no go. <laughs> Same with Bobby Portis. This is a, this is a, this is a situation where B- Budenholzer has used Bobby Portis in very key ways, right? Throughout the series, he's been in and out, in and out, of, in and out, in and out. And in Game Five, he was spectacular. Got the offensive rebound. In Game Four, he only played 15 minutes. And in Game Six, with one we just saw, he was a no show. Even though he got his minutes, his production wasn't there. I don't know if I can credit that to the inconsistency of how he's been used. Injuries, the defense, I don't know. But Bobby Portis not showing up in a home game, playoff game, a closeout playoff game, that that's not like Bobby. You know, that's not like him. I expected him to have a big game to hit to close out a team. You know how that crowd loves Bobby. And he didn't take advantage of that for whatever set of reasons. And I do believe it's going to bite them in the backside. They needed Bobby to play well at home in game six. Now, that he plays well tonight may be good enough, but they needed him then. And he just wasn't able to get it done. And I, I do I do think that's going to – that that's the end. I, I think you guys know I picked the Celtics to win this series. And I'm not changing that now that we're here at a game seven uh, with the Boston Celtics having an opportunity just like the Bucs. This is what I thought I would see. Great coaching. Injuries and and, and 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 defense defining different things about this series. I wonder what Robert Williams' uh, status will be for tonight. If he's not available to go, I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing in the world. And the reason why I say that is this: Al Horford has been balling. Al Horford is he's going to be ready for tonight. Uh, Daniel Tice has also been very efficient, so I know he'll be ready as well. And uh, you know, when they've gone small, the good things have happened. Like the Boston Celtics have, have had good things happen um, with Grant Williams guarding Giannis and stuff like that. Like they have plenty of size with their others. Their their others are big enough to make things happen. And um, with Derek White's picking up his play, it helps even more. And that's who we're going to talk about here. Derek White has been much better these last two games. And as I was telling you guys, his, his uh, trajectory is pointed upward. I think he's getting more comfortable by the second. I think his confidence is growing. I think he's finding his, his way to find uh, shots. And I, I think I think you're in for a pretty good game from Derek White. Um, you know, much has been said about how he's played in this team. And, and I said, you know, when they first made the trade, that I thought it was a possibility he could provide a big three-like um, energy in terms of I've seen what he looks like when he plays at his best, and he could put up some pretty, pretty big numbers. He did that with the Spurs, some really, really impressive lines. So I haven't seen that with the Celtics as of yet, but I know he's capable. And on a night like tonight, it's necessary. He's going to need to play well with the minutes given. (laughs) So big game, man. Peyton Pritchard has shot poorly. It would be great if they gave him some minutes. He actually hit some shots. But I'm not going to lie to you. I probably wouldn't play him if I would make you doka. This is game seven, man. Grant Williams hasn't scored in two games. Hasn't attempted more than three shots. I need him to get back in the scoring ways. He's very important to what they do. I know he's taking on a hell of a lot of assignment trying to guard Giannis, um, but he's healthy. And we've seen games in these playoffs where he's hit four threes, five threes. He needs to be aggressive. Three attempts is not enough. They need the scoring. Uh, Simple as that. If Giannis coming out there scoring 50, you need to be scoring too. Simple as that. Um, So... That's that's the thing, you know. I think the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, both teams have done a good job of taking care of the basketball despite going up against some serious defense, which is extremely impressive. Um, You know, you like what both teams have done on the rebounding end. No one's really had an edge rebounding to my my thought. Usually it's it's the Bucks, actually, to be honest with you, who has a slight edge. (laughs) But, um, you know, I think think Giannis has been spectacular. It's too bad his team um, wasn't able to to kind of help him, you know, in this previous game. I think if, if he would have just had a little bit of help, this series is over. But now we got to, you know, check out a game seven on the road if you're him, and you're coming off a game where nobody showed up. Now they're supposed to show up on the road <laughs> with this type of pressure. 
yes, these are NBA champions, so you best believe you expect them to. But at the same time, you're not going up against no scrubs. Jason Tatum's coming off the game of his life. Jalen Brown's been steady and solid and doing what exactly what he needs to do. Um, you know, Marcus Smart has now found his, his shot. He's getting healthier about a second. Al Horford's confidence is up. He's healthy. You're in trouble when that's the case, too. So it's like it's a lot going against him. You know, the, the Grant Williams is an excellent defender. His legend is growing by the second as well. So it's like when you when you when you look at this Boston Celtic team and you see all the weapons that they have and you look at the Milwaukee Bucks and you look at the performance they just had with their others, you feel really good about your pick if you're me. You feel really good. I got a Laker hat on and I am picking the Celtics to win game seven because unfortunately, that's just what I see. Now, Giannis is going to go out and score 50. And a lot of times that does equal enough. Um, but they've had six attempts at stopping this dude. And some of those attempts have been, I'm not going to say successful. That's that's a lie. But what they've done is made him more inefficient um, than, than most teams would have. And so when you know that to be the case, you understand that what they're doing is about as working as working could possibly be against Giannis. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. He go off for 60-something, 40-something. Yeah, as long as the others aren't doing nothing, you still did the right thing defensively. So they chose right. They let him eat. And others did nothing, and it worked for the Celtics. I don't know if you can get that same thing tonight. Look for Drew Holiday to be a hero again, man. That's the thing. If you're, if you're a Celtics fan, you need to be on edge with this dude because he's been playing clutch. And even in games where he's not been good, he's clutch. You know, he might go 5 for 25, but still – gets the two steals and win the game so you gotta respect that his clutch ability is on both sides of the floor um so yeah man the boston celtics are gonna live and die with two things their ability to hit the three-point shot and what was that other thing it just left me they gotta hit the three and jason tatum has to be efficient with all of the shots that he takes he, he may launch 30 of them tonight he's gonna have to hit about 15 if he starts going for less than that or if his efficiency takes inefficiency takes possessions away from his team that works right into the bucks favor especially if they take care of the clock like i said they need to and that is what i was going to say for the bucks it's taking care of the clock <clears throat> we've surmised that they have issues uh controlling the ball based on the fact that they score too fast. So they need to slow that down, limit the possessions that the Boston Celtics have by crashing the heck out of those glass, uh, get something out of Grayson Allen and Bobby Porters tonight. Can't have a no-show from those guys tonight. It won't work. Uh, Pat Connaughton, continue to hit the glass and be effective offensively because they're going to hunt you, um, driving at you. We know that based on the article read. So those are the, those are the keys. That's what we know, man. The Bucks are going to force the Celtics to hit them. Hit those threes. Either going to hit them or not. The C's need to hit threes. And this game is in their house. So you best believe Boston's going to be jumping. This is the first game seven in their building. I don't know how long. It's probably been a little bit of time. I'm not sure. But um, the Bucks are the NBA champions at the end of the day. These are the defending champions. So if the Celtics are serious about winning a championship this year, you got to get past this guy. You got to get past this guy. And so that's just all there is to it. He's going to do what he does. I expect 15 and 20 from that man. Uh, 50 and 20, excuse me. 50, 5, 0 and 20 is what I expect from Giannis. It's going off. Um, what will the others from the Celtics do? Can this be a night where Jalen uh, Jalen Brown goes off? Since we had a Jason Tatum game, can we get a Jalen Brown game? He goes for 40? I think that's a good thing. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, I would like to see Jalen Brown be a bit more aggressive. I respect that they have a pecking order there and Jason Tatum's number one of it. But Jalen Brown is more than capable of going off, off. He, he can, You can pencil him in for 35 if he's the focal point of your offense. No question about it. So I do think he needs to be ultra aggressive, particularly driving at the basket. Um, you know, drive, <laughs> drive, bro. Drive, drive, drive. That's what I tell him. So anyway, that's what I got, man. Um, I like being right. I picked the Celtics to win in seven, so that's what it is. If the Celtic lose... Um, from a Laker fan's perspective, it would be a great relief, as you guys probably can imagine. But I'm not I'm not thinking along the lines of my Laker when I talk to you guys about the Celtics. I'm really not. I'm thinking of you guys as an analyst who's looking at two teams that have players that I like, and I want to see players succeed when they're playing basketball. We're not a part of this. We're, we're sitting on the couch. So 
it, the reality is, as long as they don't win the championship, I'm fine. I can get them all the way to game seven of the finals. So long as they lose that game, it's most important. That's all I'm saying. BDF 44, Legs for Life. I'm out.